Hey folks, it's Shane from Forman CV. Today we're taking another look at our Tesla Gen 3 charger. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. So, for those of you new to this channel, this is my little spot on YouTube where I put uh, electric car components into fun and interesting cars, convert them to electric, and as part of that I take a look at some of the, the components that I'm using in a little bit more depth, uh, which is what we're going to do today. For those of you who aren't new to the channel, I need to apologize for the distinct lack of content over the last couple of months. Um, I've just been ridiculously busy with work and personal things and I've probably only managed a couple of hours work on the car in that period, which is really a bummer, but we're back at a point where I, I can start working on it again and I can get out more content, which brings me to today's video. I have started going more in depth into the, um, the Tesla Gen 3 charger and actually I wanted to just focus on one component today and just be able to get some, you know, something interesting out to you guys um, outside of my usual uh, weekend schedule. So today we're going to look at the high voltage junction box on this Tesla Gen 3 charger. So it's one of the, there's a few things that make the this particular charger different from the, the previous versions and even the things that have gotten since. One is just the, the amount of power they can put out. So it's 22 kilowatts in, in total um, if you've got all three phases running. But the other thing is that the high voltage junction box is actually incorporated into the, um, the design of the charger. Uh, which is really compact, really well packaged, and um, very difficult to see what it's doing if you're just looking at it uh, from the top. So what I'm going to do is just take all the bits apart and we'll look at the, um, I guess what it's doing, um, why it's doing it, and then how we're planning to, to reuse that. So yeah, let's go um, get it taken out and we'll uh, take a look at it. So before we can get to looking at what's under the the bones of this charger, uh, we need to take out some of the, the additional components and that's mainly these, um, I guess, inbound bus bars and contactors and the, the routing out to the, the battery. So I'm going to undo these components, we'll lift them out, we'll take a look at them. So most of the screws that hold down uh, this board are actually the ones that we took out to remove the plastic protection. Um, obviously we needed to still need to undo the um, kind of bus bar con contacts. Um, and now there's only one contact left. You can see it down there. Um, and that's for the, um, to connect the, the bus bars out to the rest of the car. So we'll get that undone and we should be able to lift this out. Well that's looking pretty empty. All right, so now that we've got this apart, I can take you into a little bit more detail on it. So I didn't want to talk about this too much in the last video, um, mainly because it's rather difficult to show you what's happening here uh, when it's in there, because there's a lot of things happening underneath as well. And yeah, I just wanted to take it out and now I can show you exactly what it is. So this board, um, I guess the reason for its existence in here is so that we can have a single unit in the Tesla that handles both the AC charging 
and the routing of the DC fast charging. Um, so basically we've got four inputs here and depending on what type of electricity is being sent along it, um, it will either be sent through the charger to then come back out as DC or it'll be sent straight to the outputs as DC. But let's take a proper look at this. Um, I'll flip this over and you can see it much, much better. Okay, so um, where this sits in the charger, basically you've got your wires, your high voltage wires coming in here and connecting to the four points on it. Now, what happens in the way that's routed depends on what type of electricity. It so if this is AC, you've got your single neutral and then three live phases coming in uh, and they're connected to there. In the US version, I think there's just a single neutral and a single live, um, but the, the principle remains the same. So for the neutral that comes in, it goes straight onto the bus bar that connects to the, um, the individual kind of charging circuits and that's this kind of one neutral input and it routes to the, the other three. The three phases for the live um, are routed more individually, so they're coming just to a, each one going to a single um, charger. And you can see in here that those lives are actually routed basically along the circuit board to each of the outputs. So you've got this one going to there, this one going to there, that one going to there, and this one, there's no routing on the board because it's connected straight to the bus bar. Um, and as you can see there, basically, because these are direct connections, there's no need for those contactors if you're just using this for AC charging. If you want to use this for DC fast charging, that's where the, um, the other, the contactors come into play. And seeing it on its own like this, you can't really tell how it's going to be used. But if we overlay the bus bars onto it, you can see now we've basically got two pairs of contactors. So the wires coming into these two, when the contactor is closed, uh, based on the signals that come into it, and you can see the little points where the, the signals are connected to the circuit board, um, will go to that bus bar, and these two will go to this one. So this one routes down, goes along the outside, and that's actually our, n our negative. And this one, uh, go, which goes kind of on the inside, is our positive. So that means for the DC fast charging, its power comes into the enclosure to these points, contactors close, they connect to this bus bar, and that then connects straight to the battery. So that's just pumping power straight into the battery. Um, there's, obvious, there's basically signals that are sent back and forth between the charger and the um, the fast charger to kind of tell it how much current the battery's willing to take. Um, so the throttling of it would happen on that side. This basically just takes whatever's pumped into it, it'll forward it onto the battery. Um, so what we've also got then on this bus bar is our connections for the um, the output from the ACs. So the AC, the AC current comes in here, goes through the conversion process to DC, and it comes out positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Here, that connects to uh, a series, uh, two bus bars, which are connected to cables, which then come all the way back up front, which then takes us back to our front bus bar. I don't know why I'm calling this front. Uh, these actually sit laterally in the, in the Tesla, so it's side. But basically the cables coming from the DC output of the AC charger come up to here. So you've got one, which is going to, to this little uh, stud here, and that's our positive. And then the negative is connecting to here, which connects to the bus bar via 
our large fuse. So there we have it. That is the high voltage junction box on a Tesla Gen 3 charger. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. Um, if you like this sort of thing or the job of kind of putting these things into, uh, you know, classic cars or older cars and that sort of stuff, then yeah, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already, already subscribed. Uh, drop us a like, comments are always appreciated. Um, but yeah, till next time, thanks for joining us and we'll see you soon.